Hey, young people. We're here with Buckster. He's adjusting his little thing over there. What is that, Buck? An electronic caliper or something? Uh, what this is, there's a digital readout, and I, I needed to go from 15,000 to 27,000. So that little piece is there, is we're still building that 204, and that piece was a little... Um, the diameter was too small for the barrel. Diameter too small for the barrel. He can use that tech technical window. I was just like, it don't fit. <laughs> so he's taking off fifteen, another fifteen thousand. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. He said that ain't a lot. It's all great to me. I don't know how big it is. And that noise you're hearing is a full gas oil mixture, I guess. That's for There you go. So you just turn that off. Okay. And you know that took off 15,000 because that's what you said it. Okay. 12,000. Or 12,000, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty spiffy. Is that thing going to be hot? Nope. Because it's coolant. Oh, because that oil and it's water was cooling it. Okay. Yeah, that keeps it cool. That gives me a smooth enough cut in there. I can. He's got eyes on, I don't. For the safety Sally <laughs> Ah, my. Okay. Should be all done. We're just gonna try it and test that it. That looks pretty spiffy. The barrel's right over here. Take off another couple thousand because it's a uh, okay. You so that's why that. we originally, what's that? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just You're just going to do the same thing, thing. okay? We'll, we'll stop that there because he's going to do the same thing, okay? So he finished honing out that little piece, and I wanted to show you where it goes and what he honed out, okay? This is the threaded piece that has a shoulder on it here that you really can't see because it's black and black, but we we hollowed out the, the front end of it. This barrel, this nut, the barrel nut slides over the length of the barrel. That's where it was sticking right there, it wouldn't go over. So that's why he took it off. Then he tightened that in there. The barrel's got that little pin. And then he torques that down. About 40 foot pounds. He's saying there. about 40. 40 foot Doesn't pounds. have to be, what do you call it, tractor type? It's not John Deere tractor type. John Deere. <laughs> I tried to look up a that on the Google to slide that in on the video and okay. there wasn't no definition. <laughs> right, so now we have the uh, the barrel is attached to the receiver and with the barrel nut on it. Next thing we're going to do is to get set up to put the barrel shroud or the forend on. And the gas yeah. tube. And the gas tube. All right. Bar. Well, in that there and go do that. And up. I started it. <laughs> All right. We're, I'm still at Lone Star in Gainesville and we're with Uncle Buck here, and we're going to talk about this gas tube and gas block and all kind of good stuff. He's got all kind of stuff laid out. Take her away, Buckster. This is not the same as baked bean gas or cauliflower gas, <laughs> coleslaw gas, or cabbage gas. This is talking about high-pressure gas from an AR-15 system. As you can see here, we have a 16-inch barrel with a the 18-inch or the longer uh, gas block here, which is called a mid-length gas block. You've got the gas block here, gas tube, going into the bolt. And this is, this is what makes the whole system work. When the round is fired, high pressure gas follows the bullet and pushes it all the way out the bore. It goes up through the gas port in the barrel, into the gas block, down to the gas tube, and through the gas key, into the bolt. The bolt carrier, is pushed back as a bolt carrier is pushed back this cam unlocks the bolt and allows it to come free of the barrel so that's the way it works now when you're installing this little puppy in there 
This is a, a close-up picture of the gas port in the, the bottom of the gas tube. The gas port is right here. It's held in by a roll pin, which goes into the side here. It is possible to screw this thing up and do pin it in the barrel like this. It's never going to work because the gas is coming in through the port in the top of the barrel, which is connected to this port in the right. bottom of the gas block and goes into this port in the gas tube and on here. Actually, dirty gas does go into the bolt here. Part of uh, the weakness of the AR-15 design is that they decided, decided to have uh, gas pushing the bolt forward uh, and holding it forward with, with gas pressure for uh, parts of an instant or something like that. There are rings, like piston rings, on the bolt itself to help push it forward. But the uh, once the bolt is unlocked, it can't go left, can't go right because of a... Uh, a groove in the top of the receiver keeps this cam uh, from turning. It can't go anywhere until it gets to the point in which it can lock and then the cam locks a bolt. Now, in today's process, we have a bull barrel, which was uh, roughly 936, 940 for the diameter here. So it requires a 936 gas block. The barrel came with a steel gas block here. Unfortunately, we had chosen a smaller fore-end. You know, this has a, uh, some real neat features to it. It enables the, uh, the shooter to, to add little C-mod uh, sections of the Picatinny rail wherever he'd like. But this larger gas block won't fit inside there. This particular gas block, as you can see, the, the fore-end, completely encapsulates the gas block. Okay, not a big problem, except we have had, had, uh, <laughs> had some, some other, uh, other issues. One, the, this factory 936 gas block was about two thousandths of an inch uh, too tight to go onto the, to the barrel itself. So first off, I honed the inside of that out with a uh, brake hone. That, took off some of the uh, the black finish, but it really didn't do us any good as far as, as dimensionally changing it. So we used an old Indian technique. <laughs> it's a propane map torch here. We heated up the aluminum in the, uh, the gas block itself to make the hole bigger so we could drive it on and onto the, uh, the barrel. Now that we have the uh, everything on, we're going to install this Low profile foreign. The foreign itself barely, as you can see, barely slides over into the gas block. Coming down all the way here, locking into position. It's got two keys which keep it from turning. And now we're done. The designers are pretty sharp, and they actually, you can see the three holes in the bottom of the gas block. Right there. They're tiny. Let me zoom in on that. Yeah, the holes line up perfectly to where you get to them, put the screws in after it's in. So, take an Allen wrench. We've got three little set screws that are probably 1032 pitch. And we know that the, uh, the gas block is in the proper position because we lined it up properly before we drove it on. We, uh, we already had the gas tube in the gas block, and, so, and it went into the gas hold in the receiver like it's supposed to. And these screws are just re, um, making sure the gas block does not move, stays where you put it, so the holes are lined up, yeah, so, right? Yeah, some people want to use Loctite on these things. I don't find it's generally a big problem uh, with these smaller caliber guns. Um, if you if you think it's a problem, you can use a... Use there's a three holes, so I think we only put two in. We've got, got two in so far, and there's, there's one maybe, it looks like it's going to go. It, I mean, we can move the... Uh, we can move the gas block forward. Or not the gas block, the... Uh, uh, the yeah. Hold it, pull it. Uh, not too far, yeah. Like said, it's a very snug, tight fit. And I'll pull it up just a half an inch. 
quarter of an inch to give access to that third screw. Yeah. Now the reason we didn't put those screws in, in case somebody's thinking before you slide that over, is they're not completely recessed because of the barrel. So we didn't want the extra restriction of sliding that over. So now we got this thing back into position. We're good to go. So uh, the and and how is that held so it doesn't fall off? We have two locking screws here, which are located in a plastic bag, someplace on the desk, and I believe that's the bag. That's the bag. We didn't pre-measure those. So while he's looking for that, um, we can talk about this tool. Yeah, know. there he told a couple people ask about the tool and the different things, and I'll let him explain it. But this is your AR tool that um, does different things on the AR for different end caps, and he's going to go over those as soon as he gets done putting these two screws in. And now is this uh, John Deere tractor tight or? This is, we're going to snug it up, but the uh, because these are fairly large screws, they're not uh, 648 screws or something like that. They're number eight. They're more like number 12s, and they are going to provide friction clamp on the barrel nut, which was a cylindrical nut. That's the one that we honed out before. This, right. this gap right here. We're going to. I'm going to partially close a gap and I'm going to tighten a little bit on one and move it and tighten a little bit on the other one. Lock tight on those not necessary? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's generally not, right. not going to be coming. There's not a lot, of, a lot of force. We're not pulling or, or moving that a lot. We're not moving the, the forehand trying to pull it off of here. The forehand cannot turn because there are two small wings. There's one here and there's one here which keep it from twisting. Oh. That takes off a lot of the uh, uh, the torque, there's two other set screws, of course, which all happen to have a different diameter. Oh my God. Tool, but they were the same as the gas block tools. Oh. And what is that screwing into? Is it still that nut? It's going into the side of the, of the barrel nut. Barrel nut. And we got two of those. So between the four of those, there's not going to be any vibration in the, uh, uh, the nice thing about this particular setup is the the forend is free float. It's cantilevered off of this barrel nut, and it really doesn't touch the barrel. It doesn't contact the barrel in any way, shape, or form. Um, it just very, it might very be lightly, touching the gas block, huh? Very lightly touching the gas block. Right. But, you know, we slid it over the top of that. So right. This gives you a very long Picatinny rail from front front to end. You can put iron sights on it. You can put it on. Um, Various types of optical sights, like that. So the, your forehand, with the exception of your uh, whatever muzzle brake we choose to put on there, is complete. Right now, answer a couple questions about this tool. This is a is a patented GI style um, wrench, an AR-15 wrench. I've had this thing for about 25 years, and it's not going anywhere. So uh, it has two sides to this end. This is the GI style barrel nut. As you can see, it has a heavily castellated type of a nut that goes underneath the delta ring and this side locks onto it and allows you to tighten the barrel nut on it or take it off. It also has three pins on this side. The uh, other type of barrel nut that you often see goes to a quad rail. This is one of them. Here's the one I took off my 204. And you line up the three, three pins on here, and you can take and take off and, and tighten this particular wrench. Okay. This, or, or this this nut. Actually, you do it on the other side because those holes are bored all the way through. These are a little bit in the old country, as we say, a pain in the ass to install, because they fit up here on, against the shoulder, and they have to be timed perfectly. This is on the back side. This is not where right. it really goes, but they have to be timed perfectly. So the gas block goes through here. Ah, so you either got to tighten it or loosen it to line those up. Yes, and that can be, be something of a challenge. Uh, you got a little fancy Brownells tool that you use, yeah. Handy dandy tool which <laughs> fits into the receiver. Right. And its purpose is to mimic the gas uh, or the, the 
bolt carrier and the gas key and this metal rod mimics the gas tube right and once you line this up through the receiver this tube will actually stick out long enough so that you can line up with the uh, with this barrel nut that you're you're tight tighten it up on the, on the far that end. That way you know your your tube's good. gonna be in the right position. Now we get this torque properly and this tube and the, the tool goes through there, I'm lined up, declare victory, and start putting a gas block on here. So you don't normally put this gas block on here without having a barrel nut on here because they we're just for the for the purpose of demonstration, right? We wanted to show you what it looks like when an AR fifteen system up here now on the m16 this runs about 750 rounds a minute so this thing locks and unlocks more than 10 times a second you can do the math but it said that's why it has to be very precisely aligned so that the gas tube goes into that little hole there's not a lot of extra slop as you can see there they're right. about the same diameter plus or minus 15 20 thousandths of an inch and so it lines up and if the bolts lined up because that's also a requirement it locks up but that's the way the gas system on our ER-15 works and the dirty gas isn't introduced all the way back in here not into just the action but into the bolt itself right that's why you got to scrape that bolt where the carbon builds up that's why you have that's to from that gas because the dirty gas that uh, unburnt hydrocarbons from your powder that uh, coming back there it probably Let's say eight to twelve thousand psi, um, maybe a little higher, maybe twenty thousand psi. They're 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 right up there. That's why these tubes are thick. They're you were remarking earlier that hey these tubes are tough. Yes they are. Yeah they're you don't, pretty heavy. I didn't I thought they looked fragile, but they they're pretty do, thick. But they're pretty thick. Yeah, you know, you're not going to jack up a car with one of them, but it's right. You're not going to bend it anytime. And so. I think. Did we show them the the holes in the lineup? I think we yes, did. We did. We okay. All right. Holes. I just want to make sure we cover that. All right, well, I think that's uh, pretty much it. Now we're just going to connect the upper and lower. Uh, I'm going to put this little rail right here on the bottom. This comes with the, the thing, and that's going to hold the bipod. Um, yeah, I'm going to sit there and pull the pins out. And, you know, some guys made some comments about, about uh, cutting the spring off or not cutting the spring off. The reason I choose to cut the springs off is so that I can... I can take these, these pins out, put them in and out without the use of a punch. If you're in the field, you don't really have a lot of choice. How you, if you have to open up the gun and take it apart so you've got to clean the bolt out, how are you going to get it out there? Are you going to use, take a live round and, and pound on it with a rock? Right. I, I prefer not to do that either. So I prefer the... Uh, so. There you are, Rick Gore. <laughs> the new 204 is 24 inch barrel, pretty much done. All we got to do now is put a few rounds to it and uh, put the scope on, put the bipod on, and we are in business, Buckster. Well, and that's the uh, this is the little release I told you he put with a little pin. It gives three ways to unhook this you can pull it on the outside, you can pull it on the inside, or you can push it with your two fingers. Yeah. Um, which is a pretty handy little thing. You just add it. If you're right-handed, you can grab it with one hand. If you're left-handed, you can come this way. Help with the left right. hand, or you can use two fingers if you don't have a scope. Once you put a scope on this thing, yeah, it restricts it, it the. It tends uh, to. In fact, I'm not sure if these mounts are going to be tall enough, but they. Uh, they restrict your access. Right. To the charging handle. That's why we put an extension in there. So. It's going to look bad to the bone. We'll get it hooked up. And all right. We'll end that there, and then maybe when we get to finish all this off, I'll, I'll we'll put tag it on. Yeah, there. I'll cut it in there. All right, Buckster. Well, thanks. You bet. Don't forget to buy his books. I wanted to take y'all a look. He's got his books back here. Y'all want to tour the store. We'll do that later. But here's some of his books on the shelf. Uh, I usually put a link on Amazon. I don't know if he has more here. But these are uh, some of his books that he has. If you're in Gainesville, I'm sure he'd be happy to... Uh, sign it for you and uh we'll end that there buckster